Hey, today we're going to discuss, I guess it's a book review. I read Grounded, Frank Lorenzo and the Destruction of Eastern Airlines, and the Eastern Airline Strike Accomplishments of the Rank and File Machinists. The reason why I read these two books is because I've flown with a few crew members that have a strong opinion about unions because of their previous experience at other airlines. And I had to dig a little deep and basically they were very angry and they're like, the unions laid me off or the, the unions bankrupted the company. So being the investigative reporter that I am, I wanted to read up and see if I could find out more about their situation. So basically we have Frank Lorenzo who owned multiple airlines. I don't know if he started before deregu deregulation or, or after. I think it was before, but he owned many airlines. And what he would do is buy an airline put it through bankruptcy to void the union contracts. And that's basically what he did with Continental. He obtained Continental, put Continental through bankruptcy to void the pilot and flight attendant contracts and possibly other work groups. And at the time, Continental wasn't really bankrupt and there wasn't laws in place. Thankfully, after that go around, the laws were changed so it's more difficult to do that um, but he would go in void the contracts fire everyone and hire everybody at half pay so let's say you're a mechanic making eighteen dollars an hour he would come in void your contract fire you and then hire someone off the street for nine dollars an hour and the CEOs and business leaders love this they thought he was a hero so now Continental is became successful again, supposedly, and he went to Eastern and bought Eastern and wanted to do the same thing with Eastern. But the employees knew about him. They knew of his tactics, and they wanted to fight back. Now, however, the financial um, atmosphere at the time was not stable the economy there was a recession and this is happening after deregulation but the pilots the flight attendants and the mechanics they gave concessions they wanted to keep their company alive and they wanted to keep their jobs the unions don't when a boss comes to you and say hey listen the economy is tanking and we're losing money work groups generally give concessions and the work groups at Eastern gave concession after concession after concession. And there comes a point where you have to be like, whoa, listen, you're asking for a little too much. And that's what the mechanics did. Um, so basically what happened next is he started selling off parts of Eastern and his other airlines, including Continental, to fight his anti-union battle. This one man, either driven by greed by insanity or by just a general hate towards unionized labor drove Eastern into bankruptcy, drove it out of business, and then drove Continental in bankruptcy a second time because he wanted to use all the airlines he owned to fight Eastern's battle. And basically, long story short, Eastern was liquidated and out of business. He lost control of all his airlines and he's banned by the government to start anymore. So that should tell you a lot about how one man can destroy a whole industry. And um, it's also important to, to point out is that even after Continental was put through bankruptcy, deunionized, and it's supposed to supposed to be great, they reunionize. And 
without him in charge. So if being a non-union carrier is so great, why didn't Continental remain that way? That's something to think about. So when you come across or come in contact with a colleague that has such a hard stance against unions, you have to think what happened to them. Are they, is their opinion emotional? Because when something traumatic happens to us and we're personally involved, it could be an emotional opinion and we might not know at the time the, what's larger at work, what higher forces are at work and when it doesn't go right and we're affected negatively and we lose our jobs and are laid off and we think it's the union that didn't help, it's actually something much larger and something much possibly evil? I don't know. Right now Frank is doing philanthropy somewhere, focusing on a life of philanthropy. So hopefully that will rid or prevent all the bad karma that's really up against him. If you do a search, you'll see that not many people have nice things to say about him, and I don't, I don't blame them. If he was more open and willing to work with the unions and be more uh, level-headed, maybe it wouldn't have worked out that way and Eastern would still be in business. Well, thanks for your time, and we'll, I'll see you again soon.